All right, it's day 199 of this Growing Avocado Trees from Seed series. On this day I did a little prep work to get sugar water in a spray bottle so I could spray sugar water all over the leaves of my plants. I got this idea from Gary Matsuoka who runs the YouTube channel Gary's Best Gardening. He's a nursery owner with a very scientific approach to his plant growing. He's the reason why I use sandy loam now to grow all of my plants in 2020 rather than rotting organic material like uh, most other people do. So I've covered that topic in many other videos but in the beginning of this video I'm trying this idea to spray sugar water on the leaves of my plants to promote much faster growth. So in one of Gary's videos he mentioned that this is the trick for getting thousand pound pumpkins otherwise you can't get pumpkins over 500 pounds it's that if you spray sugar water on the leaves of plants um, in that case a pumpkin vine the sugar can be absorbed directly and sugar is a product of plant photosynthesis so it's an energy currency for the plant so if you provide for a lot more resources exogenously in addition to everything else the plant is already receiving such as uh, sunlight and fertilizer and micronutrients and water then it should be able to grow faster it's a very interesting idea um, as I mentioned in the subtitles in the beginning the foliar fertilization is um, something that I haven't really looked into until after I did this experiment and by the way I did another imidacloprid treatment um, recently which is the second one for the year for all my plants so basically if you spray sugar water it should be able to get in through the stomata for foliar fertilization that's the act of spraying fertilizer directly onto the leaves and it's said that for that it gets in through the stomata the little openings on the undersides of the leaves that regulate um, gaseous exchange and transpiration and things like that so this is supposed to get sugar directly into the leaves but I did this every other day and in the off days I sprayed distilled water to sort of re-dissolve the sugar and see if it would uh, help wash the leaves a little bit I don't want to cake too much sugar on and cause burn but at the same time um, I wanted to sort of reactivate the sugar by redissolving it. So here you can see I'm spraying sucrose water on the undersides of the leaves. At the time I didn't really um, look into you know where I should be spraying this but now that I think about it spraying the tops of the leaves is uh, pretty pointless and it damages the aesthetics. It takes a lot to wash it off. So after trying this for about a week on day 210, I gave up on spraying sugar water on my plant leaves because I didn't really notice an effect. So it was a very cool idea, but when I thought more about it, I just realized there's not a lot of sugar in a gallon. So one tablespoon, yeah, that might seem like a lot, but how much of that is actually getting into the stomata? getting into the plant and promoting growth um, probably not that much and on some of these bottom leaves I actually did take uh, sugar water of the same concentration and soak some of the leaves briefly and for uh, a plant that's having a real struggle growing um, after a transplant I did soak the leaves for um, more than a day and I didn't really see anything so I would have to conclude that this experiment uh, proves that it doesn't really do anything. Um, if any of you have experiences to the contrary, please let me know and what your methods were. But um, yeah, the more I thought about it, it's just, uh, yeah, it's not a whole lot of sugar for a plant this big. And very little of it is actually getting into the, the leaves the, through the stomata it's mostly just caking on the leaves and as I've said before in years past uh, if you spray anything other than um, basically distilled water on plant leaves uh, you run the risk of causing leaf burn 
because you've got residue, in this case uh, sucrose, which just keeps trying to suck water out of the plant in this hot and dry environment. And yeah, there's, there's no other water source. The atmosphere is very dry around here, so it's just sucking water away from the plant um, continuously. I didn't want to run the risk of burning my avocado leaves, although they're huge. They're also very fragile in my impression, unlike the Joshua tree or mango leaves, or even the pomegranate leaves, which can respawn very easily if something happens to them. The avocado leaves, once lost, don't seem to come back. Uh, the plant gets taller, but doesn't seem to replace the leaves. So it's day 221, 7 a.m., uh, all the leaves are pointing upwards, they're very erect, and they have an acute angle relative to the axis of the stem. It sort of suggests that the undersides of these leaves, newly developing leaves, grow faster than the top sides throughout the night. So this is what you'll wake up to, but as I'll show you in this next clip, which was taken 12 hours later in the same day, the leaves are all curled by 7 p.m., so that suggests that during that time of the day, the top sides of the leaves grow faster than the undersides to produce this curling effect. And this really bothered me with the second and third sets of newly developing leaves, one or fourth set. But by now I'm used to it because it's a recurring pattern. So I know that there's nothing wrong. The plant isn't lacking for water and fertilizer burn isn't about to happen for the leaves so this fourth set is coming along quite nicely and it's very curled and sort of unesthetic I would say in the beginning but in the end they're going to be monster leaves like this third set right here so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen although that thirteenth may just be the shoot apical marrow stem um, deciding to shoot up and create a fifth set of leaves i don't know but so far it looks like it could be twelve or thirteen right there the fourth set of leaves is the biggest set of leaves i've ever had for this plant and i can't wait to see how big they get and also what happens for the fifth set of leaves so they come in waves for me i don't know if that happens for everyone but that's just the way it's been for my one plant here on day 231 you can see there's been a lot of development and it's amazing this thing just keeps getting taller and bigger so um, the first set of leaves just seems minuscule Is it six or seven i believe one of them was one of those little vestigial leaves that doesn't do anything really it doesn't get any bigger than a, a tiny size so yeah it's just more and more of the same I just keep doing what I've been doing because it's been successful I am considering doing a transplant though because well I have no idea how big the root system is here and how healthy it is I hope it's a root ball uh, if it's not then I could be in some trouble with leaves this big this plant could be very susceptible to drying out and losing all of these giant leaves. But it's growing in a sandy loam. The roots should be able to breathe very well. And as you can see, the fourth set of leaves is coming in on its own. Um, but despite me growing these in very well aerated soil and uh, pretty nice conditions, uh, these leaves are maybe growing way too big. Uh, just like the third set so they do tend to sort of be misshapen until they're very mature so two of the leaves from the third set are over 12 inches or 30 centimeters long that's a uh, astonishing length and these tend to be on the thinner side compared to their length but the fourth set of leaves some of those are just really really wide so i don't know if they're going to get to the same length but um I think some of them are destined to have a, a bigger surface area than anything the third set has seen. So getting back to the sugar experiment again, it was very interesting, very fun. I was very eager to try it, 
but ultimately it didn't pan out the way I thought it would. I thought I'd witness an explosion of growth and at least some of my plants, definitely not the Joshua tree I was thinking. So it's day 234, it's late August 2020. My balcony plants are starting to get limited direct sunlight. I have a new series going on and I moved away the giant Bangkok guava. So on day 238, uh, I was prepping for a vacation. So I let this thing sit in a pretty tall saucer of water. But I've only tested this setup for three days, so I don't know how well it works. I know this plant can't go a week without being watered because its uh, water usage is so high, especially now that it's late in summer and it's so hot. So I did add two small scoops of miracle Grow, but I'm kind of wondering if that layer of fertilizer water will just sit on top and have a hard time flowing through the pot. And I think this could use some extra fertilizer because these new leaves look a little uh, yellow, but that's nothing new really. I mean, that's what happened for the second and third sets. So on day 245, you can already see there's been a little bit of a burn by the time I came back. A legendary heat wave struck Southern California. It was uh, over 100 Fahrenheit. Tomorrow, it's going to be 109 expected or 43 Celsius, which is very hot for this area. I know it gets hotter in the inland desert, but not for this area. Three of my newest leaves are badly burned at the tips. This looks to be fertilizer burn rather than damage from dehydration or purely the heat. So I'm gonna prune these because they're ugly and relatively small. Well, this one's a little bigger, but they're just gonna suck up resources and always be ugly. And they're gonna get a lot bigger, so I would rather have those resources go to all these other leaves. You can see little buds above the petioles. On day 246, it was already 103 Fahrenheit at 9 a.m. If you really crank up the volume for this clip, you can hear the leaves fall to the ground and also the wood crackle on the trees outside. So I moved my avocado sapling indoors because it got to 109 later that day at least. And that would have spelled certain death for my avocado plant. Past a certain point, well over 100 Fahrenheit, uh, the leaves just will all die and the stem will get burned as well and if that happens that'll basically undo the entire series so the next day I'm going to take this out because the weather report suggests that temperatures are going to be much lower going forward so I think the crisis is over although in San Diego Southern California you should never count out uh, Santa Ana winds coming in early October which could bring even higher temperatures sometimes and extreme dryness that would also finish off a big avocado sapling like this. So this one leaf at the top has a lot of turker pressure and I hope I get either a fifth set of leaves or the fourth set continues. Thanks for watching.